G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do a crystal tray for you today. And I'm using my crushed ice silicone insert, inlay, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> crushed ice. So I'm going to use that. And I am putting it with my small tray, my 20 centimeter tray. So I'm just going to make sure that it's centered nicely. I can't stick my head over the top of it and look, otherwise you'll see that I've got my head on the video. So I'm just making sure that it's as centered as possible and then push that down. Now it's a pretty thick insert, but I'm hoping, actually that's more on this side. I'm hoping that um, the resin's still going to, to cover it. I only need like, you know, a couple of mils. Don't look at my dirty fingernails. I keep getting paint and, I think that's um, pigment paste under there. I should wear gloves all the time, shouldn't I? Anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to just dust the edge in there with my Meron. It says gold, but it's more of a, it's more of like a, I don't know, a coppery gold. It's not a yellow gold. So I'm going to try that. I better just, I don't really want too much of it going on here. But let's just put that in there. So I want it on the side of the inlay on the bottom of the mold and then the side of the mold as well so I'm gonna do that I should have it on my lazy Susan shouldn't I that would be so much easier to do uh, where is it it's a bit grotty <laughs> I was using it for acrylic pouring so it's a bit grotty but never mind there we go that'll make it much easier. All right, bear with. Oh, did I? Oh, what happened there? How did that spill? Gosh. All right, so this is easy. I'll just go around like this, moving my little piece of paper towel as I go. Because I've dusted with um, the gold quite a lot, like the bright yellow gold, so I thought I'll try this one. I haven't really used my Meron very much, and I should because it's a lovely, lovely mica. Well, actually, I don't think it's actually a mica. It says on the bottle, metallic or metal, metallic powder. So I don't know whether it's actually a mica powder or whether it's something a bit different. Anyway, I'll finish this and uh, I'll come right back to you. All done. Move that away. Put it back um, there. Just gonna grab a little bit of a baby wipe. Clean the top off. Give it a spray with some alcohol. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to do is, I'm not just going to pour clear resin into this. No, no, no. I am going to use some window film, like a holographic window film that I've got. Now, oh gosh, how do I blow that out now without it going? Actually, it might have been nice for me to see how the edges there have got a little bit of gold. It might have been nice actually put a little bit of gold around the edge there. Maybe I can just, uh, where's my blower? Where's my blower here? I just do it lightly. There we go. <laughs> that worked. It did blow my holographic paper onto the floor though. All right, so this is it here. Um, let's close my baby wipe box. This is it here. Now this is a piece of window film. I've peeled, uh, this is one that's got the, the clear backing so I've peeled it off and it's sticky 
um, I guess that sticks to the window, but that's it there. Just, yeah, just a holographic window film. You can get it on Amazon. So what I want to do, and I should have done this first. I want to need to make that. <laughs> I need to cut a circle. Oh, my gosh. See, I've never done this before. I need to get... It's all right. I've got another inlay. I'll go and grab it. It's just as well I've got a few, isn't it? So basically what I need to do now is... I shouldn't move that. I'm going to just put this here. And... Hmm, look, I'm getting ink on it. I don't want to put my big thick marker on it. Is that working? I will wipe the ink off <laughs> the mold. There we go. All right, I'll clean that later. Now I'm just going to cut that out. So roughly first so that I can pick it up and that will go back in my plastic drawer. I've got a drawer full of holographic plastics and holographic paper and all kinds of things. I'm just going to cut this on the inside of the black line so that the black's not getting transferred anywhere. I mean, I'd, I probably don't need to do this now because I'm not putting it on the piece just yet. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to mix up some resin and I'm going to use the Platinum River Table resin. Um, and I'm going to mix that up because it releases bubbles so, so well. And because it's got all these little nooks and crannies and crevices in it, um, you know, bubbles like to get trapped in there. So I'm going to use that resin um, a two to one resin that's nice and thin is always going to be a better option with something that's like that keep those you can cut those up so yeah use, use a thin resin Let's push that down again so what will happen is once I've poured the resin over I'm going to let it set up for a little while until it's um, a little bit Thicker. It's going to take quite a while because the resin, resin takes a lot longer to, to cure. So that's just going to sit, once it's sort of half cured, I'm going to just stick that over the top, okay? And then when we unmold it, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. We're just going to have to find out together, hey? So anyway, I'm going to mix up my resin now. Right, I have mixed up my resin. I'm using the river table resin. That's A and that's B. So when you bite, you get two bottles of A and one bottle of B because it's a two to one. So two parts of A, one part B. So that's what I've used. And I mixed up 100 grams of A and 43 grams of B. Now this is similar, I guess to um, what we'll be creating here but this is on a smaller piece if you saw my Christmas oh uh, yeah it was Christmas ornaments my druzy Christmas ornaments and then I had a bit of resin left so I used that it's a, in a four coaster this one that's what I that's what I used it's so cool that's the back <laughs> so I'm hoping to get something similar this was a different paper this was the um, Dichroic paper, but look, they're all similar. Dichroic, holographic, iridescent, they're, whatever you can find. I'm sure they're all going to be wonderful. Now, uh, I'm going to just spray my my mold just with a little bit of 100% isopropyl. That's it there. I buy the big, actually I'll show you. I buy the big bottles because it's much more cost effective I buy the big bottle like that from eBay and then I just fill this I initially got this one from Bunnings I think it was $29 um, but I get this big thing for $39 with free postage and then I just 
fill up the bottles and then I put it in here as well for a little a little spray. So there you go. Now, um, I wonder if 143 grams is going to be enough. Let's just start, hey? Because it's not, it's not going to be very deep on the top. We've only got a little bit of depth around the edges, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough. I couldn't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, it doesn't look as if I'm going to have enough, you guys. I might have to mix up a little bit more. Well, let it settle. Let it do its thing. Go to the edges. Now, I've never used the river resin on my druzy insert or this crushed ice insert or anything like that. Any of my, you know, textured inserts. So it'll be interesting to see how the bubbles release because this, it says on here, uh, low viscosity, which means it's thin. Well, actually, I think it's more of a medium. It's, it's like runny honey. Uh, specially formulated to release bubbles. So, yay! Look, look, there's bubbles on the side. They're, they're popping up. Um, oh, gosh, do I need to mix them all? Look, I probably only need like another... 50, another couple of ounces I reckon. Let's just push all this to the edge and then I'll see. Yeah, see down there, that's that's empty down there. I reckon I need another two ounces. So instead of 140, I need 200 grams for this. But look, look at the bubbles. They're coming up. We'll see if they, they pop on their own, eh? All right. Gosh, all right, I'm gonna go and mix up some more. Hang tight, I'll be right back. I actually mixed up 50 grams of A, 22 grams of B, and now it looks a lot. <laughs> I didn't need that much, but anyway. Okay, now you can see the, the bubble there. They've, they've popped up, but let's just give it a quick little torch. I'll take you down in a minute and we'll see if there's any bubbles. The best way to see if you've got bubbles trapped is just to use your little torch. Try and get one that's got a really high lumen count. Um, I think that's what you call them. That's just a bit of dirt or something. Now I'm looking, I'm looking for bubbles. There's one bring it up to the top that was dirt is that a bubble Do. okay there's a couple of bubbles just sticking to the silicone as bubbles love to do but you can see them with the torch I'm just cleaning out dirt as well but you can you can see them when you shine the the torch on, and especially if you shine like just past the um, the light reflection will catch the edge of the bubble, and you'll be able to see it. But um, there's really there's not many in here at all. So anyway, those have come to the. This one is a XLM-L2. Cute little thing. Um, yeah, they've come to the surface and we'll just give it a, a real quick little torch. Okay, but be careful because the silicone is right under the surface there, so you don't want to melt your silicone. I can see a couple of little edges that are still um, poking through a bit. You don't necessarily have to use my tray mold for this. You know, any any deeper tray mold will work. This is one centimeter deep. Um, but if you find that there's a few little areas that are still kind of poking through, just get your scissors and just cut them off. Just snip them off. It won't matter to the mold. Okay, so that's that's all covered. So, if you wanted to, I mean, you could put this down now, but 
the mold is full so I think when you push that down and you start poking on it to get it flat it's just you know what it's going to do it's going to all ooze out over the side and I've done that before so I'm going to just leave it and I'm going to come back no it'll be later on tonight because this resin takes a long time to set up once I can touch the surface of the resin um, you know and it's still a little bit tacky so you can touch it and it leaves a fingerprint then I'm going to come in and I'm going to stick that down all right so that's what I'm going to do um, but I'll keep coming back and I'll check it on in about 10 minutes or so and see if there's any more bubbles Can you see any? See, look at that there, and then you look at that there. Like, you know, it's difficult to see, but I think it's easier with the torch. I can't see any. Can you see any? I don't know. I'm looking through the screen, so I'm not looking at it properly. But anyway, there it is. So, um, yeah, I will see you later on this evening. Okie dokes. Right, so it's been, oh, I don't know, it's 5 p.m. now, and I did this about 10-ish, I think. <laughs> so it's been a while. So I can touch it. Um, and it's not leaving any resin on me. And maybe if I left my finger in longer, it would, but I can, I can touch it. It's not too bad. Right, so um, I'm going to put a sticky side down because obviously you don't want a stickiness on the, on the outside. So how am I going to do this? I think I'm going to start, I'm just going to start over here on this edge. Like so. And just... Gently try and pop it down. It's not exactly in the centre. It won't matter. It, it's not like it's only a millimetre out. I think I did pretty good there. Um, so, yeah, that's all we need to do now. Uh, you can, if you want to, I guess, get a little pop stick and try and smush it down. It's never going to be totally, totally level. Oops. Put some alcohol on my finger and just pop that in. See, it's still, it's still sticky. My stick fell into it. Um, but yeah, it's never going to be totally, totally level because I've, I've crushed it up. Well, it was already crushed. I didn't crush it. It was already crushed and it was in my drawer and I thought, oh, I'll just use that. I did crush it earlier, like another day. Months ago I crushed it, but not for this. I just had a piece of crushed paper there. You know what I mean. All right, now I'm just going to make sure that the edges are down. I'm not touching the resin. I'm just touching the very edge of this paper and just making sure that it's in contact with that resin. I don't want anything lifting up. Okay, I think that's it. Now, for me, I'm not going to be fussed about doing a top coat over the top. Um, I guess if you wanted to, by all means, you might want to do like maybe black or, I don't know, clear or whatever. Um, you just put less in on top you know, of your first coat. Just put a bit less in, then put this down and then put another coat on top. But I just want to see what it's going to look like. So it's a bit of an experiment, so I'm not going to spend any more time and effort and resin and money on doing a top coat because it's going to be the bottom anyway. Like, no one's going to look at it, are they? <laughs> All right, we're about to unmold it tomorrow. Cross your fingers for me that it's going to work. <laughs> see you soon. The time has come. It's set. It's the next day. 
All right, let's do this. Hopefully it's going to be pretty. I hope so. All right. Now <laughs> we do have to remember that there's a, a silicon inlay there. So, now, I don't know if you can see, there's a little tiny thin little bits of resin that's run underneath, which is fine. It comes out really easily like that. Just have to pick it off the sides. I think that's it, just those two little pieces. All right, now this is the exciting part. And I love the crunch it makes. Look at that colour. What do you think of that colour, hey? It's not as bright gold as that one, is it? It still says it's gold, but I, I think it looks more like a copper to me. All right, let me just start this off. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do it the other way. <laughs> let's, let's do it the other way, all right? And then we'll both be surprised at the same time. Look at the colours that we're getting already. Pull that out. Da da! All right, so that's it there. Good as new, you can use it again in that tray or in something else. All right, so this is the back. Now, are we ready? <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's worked. Oh, oh my god! Shut the front door! It's a shut the front door moment. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is just a gorgeous little trinket tray, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, you, you can't see what I'm seeing. Can you see, can you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Look at that. So we're getting like a pinky tone there and then it goes into yellowy gold. And there's, look at that way, and there's some greeny gold with a bit of apricot or orange in it. So if I put my hands under it, see, it is quite transparent still. But if you look at it that way, like with a, a background behind it with no sun coming out, it looks different again, doesn't it? Right, let's get you down. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so glad it's worked. I, always, I have these ideas, you know, of moulds that I want to make, and I think, oh, God, I hope they work. And it works, it works, it works. Look at that. Does that look like crushed ice or what? And, like seriously, bubble free. That river resin is just incredible. Can you see a bubble? Like, can you anywhere? Oh, look, there's some pink, pinky purples on the side. It's still not totally, totally cured the river river table resin does take a little while to to cure up totally because i only made this yesterday afternoon i better not be too too rough with it i was holding it on the side there like that and pulling the side over wow 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 look at it i'm gonna go outside with it do you want to come outside with me all right let's go look at the different colors as we go see there there we're getting like more of a a pinky purple blue aren't we it's so interesting and then over here look at that now here it's gone to gold and and turquoise as i'm walking around the studio getting different lights look at that oh wow now i'm gonna have to do one with no color behind it with just maybe a a little bit of glitter oops i gotta be careful not to bend it again and then as we get closer to the sliding door with the natural light, look at that. Actually, maybe I won't go outside. Wow, I'll just hold it up here. <laughs> look at that. That's in front of the window. <laughs> wow, it's so different. Oh, wow, that is just incredible, isn't it? The difference. We'll bring it back in here. And then this is against my my black table, black tabletop. So we're getting the the green and the gold there. 
Oh, wow. I just can't stop looking at it. It's just amazing. Like, it would make just a perfect little trinket tray, wouldn't it? Because it's got that little lip there. And how's the lip? Like, normally, you know, when you... I haven't even looked at it. Normally, you get, like, little bubbles and things, you know, on your lips there. <laughs> Nothing worse than a bubbly lip, guys. <laughs> Stop looking at it. So anyway, there it is. Crushed ice insert inlay, whatever you want to call it. Available in my eBay store if anybody wants one. Um, yeah, you don't have to buy my tray to go with it. I mean, it, if you do, it, it fits well. You can see it fits in there. Um, but you already may have a tray, you know, that, that will fit it. Oh, just in awe of how beautiful this is. Oh my gosh. All right, <laughs> I better stop going on about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've learnt something. Um, and yeah, it's just window film. But you could do that with um, cellophane as well. Holographic paper, whatever you want to do. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now. I decided to come outside after all <laughs> and have a look at it in the light, in the natural daylight. Is easy. Oh, hello, easy. <laughs>